guys, Sensei George here. Today, we're learning techniques for those with long, flowing hair. So today, we're going over techniques on what to do if someone grabs your hair from behind as well as from in front and how to deal with it. So today I have assisting with me Sharda and Daniel. So we're going to be going over what to do. I'm going to be helping narrate, but we got to have someone with long hair to do it. I'll sub in on occasion. Yeah. So the first technique is what to do if someone grabs your hair from behind. And we're going to be dealing with turning to the inside for the attack. So they turn to the inside and grab the hair. So she's going to first cover the hand to prevent him from yanking it all around and then spread her base to prevent her from being dragged or moved. Then from this posture, what she is going to do is turn in and deliver a back fist to his nose. That'll stun him and make him turn away a little bit. Then from that posture, she's gonna turn in to face him and use her elbow and drop her hips to clear it out and then come in with a hammer fist to the face one more time. This will make him stum stumble back out of pain and, and create distance for a stomp kick to follow up afterwards to the chest. Yeah. And that'll get her enough distance to be able to sprint away and escape the attacker. Yeah. So just to sub in real quick, and the reason why I'm wearing my new gi today. So Daniel-san, if you come to grab with that base, that's the most important thing here. Now for advanced people, what you can do is on that grab, you can feel the thumb. If you come in a little bit, you can feel the thumb on the hand of what's being grabbed and tell which direction his inside is by the feeling where the thumb is. So for this technique, I'm gonna to turn to the inside from that squat, and it's very important that you use your hips when you come in, because that'll really knock his face back and cause a lot of pain. This is for an additional clearance, using that arm to clear it, and then popping one more time to get that distance to set you up for this kick. What I prefer to do is whichever kick is back will load up to explode out, but you can shift from the front if that's what you're more comfortable with. So if that grab, same thing happens, and you base, strike, and clear, strike one more time, and he stumbles back, and this leg's closer and you're more familiar with that kick, just shuffle and pop out into that same kick, yeah? So that's an alternative that you can do for that posture. So uh, try it if you would come out and demonstrate uh, full speed for yourself. Very good. Now, what I want to also talk about is the biomechanics happening here to the uh, person doing the technique and the person getting the technique done to them. So, Charlotte, you're back out. I'm going to grab your hair this time. Okay. So, from this, I, when I go to grab her hair and she grabs my hand, okay? First of all, this does two things. A, grab it. This prevents me from pulling her hair and controlling her head. If she didn't have her hand on there and I start pulling her back, her head, it starts to come towards the ground and wherever the head goes, the body follows. So she grabs my hand to prevent me from being able to whip and control her. Second, what this does is it prevents me from letting go, okay? The reason that she doesn't want me to let go is because now she has my arm, she has a tool. I lost one tool to become effective. Now from that, I, may, I would have had the aggression of, I'm planning to do something, I chose a victim, I chose someone weak, and I went to go grab their hand. First thing that happens is they turn around and back fist me in the nose. I'm startled. That's gonna make me open my hand up. And then from that second, she opens her hand up to escape, the, the grip, the elbow comes over, and she drops her weight behind it. This lowers that and me. So then that follow-up hammer fist can just rock in and take advantage. Someone that wasn't expecting it and she got me that low, that hammer fist can knock me to the ground from there. Okay? It's hitting me straight on in the nose twice. Okay? So the first one being grab, set, back fist. That knocked me once. Okay? I let go out of pain. Stumble. She cleared that arm so it couldn't do anything or grab her. She hits me again in the same position, and then while I stumble back, if she's open up for that kick, the kick comes and it sets up really well. Yeah? Now, the reason that I have the kick in there is because it helps create distance. Uh, if I just stayed in here, or if he was like trying to grab my leg or something of the sort, I want to wail really hard into the chest, push them back, knock them down, and then start sprinting in the other direction. Yeah? So, now we're gonna go on to the next technique. So, Charlie, you're back out. We're dealing with what to do if someone grabs you and you turn, but now you're on the outside. You have to be prepared for both sides because while you can feel the thumb to figure out where someone is, you may be in a panic. And in that panic, you want to be prepared for both sides. It's as simple as that. Yeah. 
So Daniel San, you're back out and you're gonna grab Charlie's hair. So now we're dealing with what to do if you turn in front to the outside. Yeah. So the head doesn't become as good as the target. While it is still applicable, what happens is that when you come across, their arm is there, and if they had a strong base, now you have to like reach over, which becomes like a whip. It can do some damage, it can make them let it let go, but it might not be as effective just because the arm, okay? But what she can do is change the target to be able to hit the floating ribs with her knuckles whipping as hard as possible. Now, you have to remember, this is a surprise. He did not expect this coming. He was not prepared for a fighter. He grabbed some woman or guy by the back of his hair, thought he was gonna get the drop on them. They braced, grabbed the hand, turned and whipped really hard, knocking the air out of them, hopefully breaking a few of the floating ribs in that posture there. So from there, she's gonna turn around because the arm is clear from the, the release, then switch the grip to be able to grab the wrist and the shoulder. Now you wanna come to this side, Kurt, to be able to capture uh, the leg transition down here. So from this posture, Charter's gonna then pull back and break his balance, okay? To the point where he's about to step. And right before he gets ready to lift that foot off the ground, she kicks it and takes him down. Yeah? Very good attempt. So go ahead and do that one more time. Take uh, one side step away from the wall. He's still here. That's good, okay. okay. Just to touch up on some minor details, okay? So from that grab, you go to base, you find out which way you're going. I'm going to the outside just for showing the technique. You were moving on instinct based on what was going to happen. But from here, that base, same thing. I squat so that he can't pull my head around. I have some control. And I turn in, hitting into the ribs as hard as I can, creating a lot of pain, okay? From this posture, once the hand opens up, I turn and I secure both the wrist and the shoulder. If I'm on the inside, cool. If I'm on the outside, cool. I'm going for what I can get. It depends on his arm uh, posture as well. Now, again, there's something in here that uh, sort of got grazed over a little. Charter did it, but it may have been hard to see. It's called Koshijutsu, the art of using your fingers and grabbing onto flesh and nerves. So from this posture, I wrench down and I grab some of that flesh and I help wrench it back. It causes an additional layer of pain, which causes him to move back, breaking his balance. So that way, all it takes is a light kick. But we're gonna do a hard kick just because they made the wrong choice of picking on us in the first place. So from this posture, whipping that out. Now, note that I turn back to face my opponent because I don't want him to whip down and grab my legs. I have that control. I can brace down, pop, uh, posture up, and maintain this control. And even like do additional locks, cause him to do what I need him to do, roll him over, etc. from this posture here, and maintain him until police come, different things from this posture. But the main thing I want to do is hit, make him fall, disappear. Yeah? I don't want to confront anymore. I don't know how many people he has behind him. He may have had ulterior motives. He may be armed. I don't want to push a situation on longer than I have to. So that's how come I like this one because it's a uh, discard. So it comes up one more time. He grabs. I choose which side I'm going to. This time the outside. I turn. I whip oh. into the ribs as hard as I can. Okay? We're being nice here. But if you were to turn 130% and break the ribs as hard as possible. Coming into this posture here, legs are open, you whip him down, he's gonna fall already just from this posture. But I use this for insurance. And then I can run directly from that posture right there. So that was very good. Now, we're gonna go over what to do if someone grabs you from the front. Okay, so this one, I'm actually gonna guide you through, Charter. So, Daniel Son, you can uh, slide off the side for a hot second. So, I come to grab someone in the front of their hair to try and move them around. This could be done to the side or anything like that. It depends on how they're wearing their hair. Uh, right now the volume is more to the side. Technique doesn't change. Okay? I grab to the side right here. What she's going to do is again, first step is to glue that hand to the head so I can't just whip her by her hair and control her. Then she drops her base so that she has more control over what I can do with my hand. From here, look, look back up. And she's going to do the squat and chop my wrist in simultaneously. So go ahead and do it. And this gets me down low, because that's 110 pounds over my little wrist and bringing me down to the ground. From here, she's gonna stand back up and bring this knee straight to my face in one motion. Sending me back, yeah? So that's the technique for this one. So I'll show you guys one more time. Grab, set, knee, yeah. And again, 
escape after that. You stuck, strike, you can run, just turn around. Yeah? Now, just to go over that again, one more time in a little bit more detail, Daniel San, you're out with me. So, in this situation, from the head grab, what uh, may be hard to see is the technique being done to the wrist. It's a form of take or re. So what's gonna be happening is that this hand covers over the wrist, but now I'm using my hands to chop down into the wrist while driving it straight. So this motion here brings him down. So showing that without uh, anything on it is like me trying to make his fingers touch the back of his forearm, and that causes him to bend. So I'm using that same motion with my wrist to bring him down. From here, if he happened to have like some Herculean grip or something like that and he still wouldn't let go, this is where you can grab fingers and push them towards themselves and cause additional pain setting up for the follow-up. Yeah. So all I did was feel where the hand was. And I'm trying to get his hand off and he's still holding on. I picked the finger and I crushed it. Yeah. That's going to get some compliance. That's going to make them whip around or let go. If they let go, punch and go. Yeah. Don't sit around there and wait. So. That was uh, Ninja Street Defense with Sensei George dealing over hair grabs from the rear, from the front, and dealing with uh, both the outside and inside from the rear. It's very important to learn these techniques just in case of uh, someone coming up and grabbing you from behind. In my situation, I wore a bandana so that I could have something to be grabbed. And you got to be prepared for these types of techniques because guess what? Any situation in which someone just grabs you by your head and pulls you all the way down, you're done. You're out on the ground. But if you learn anything from this video, the most important part is, if you're walking and someone grabs the back of your head, so go ahead and grab Daniel Son. So grab and squat. Get control, find your base. That's gonna give you time. Time is precious because time gives you time to think, okay? So from that, I'm able to then look, figure out what's going on, what side I'm going on, and then choose which strike or follow-up I wanna do. So if anything from this video, hold, squat, then react. Don't give him time to think. Move faster than your opponent. Surprise him. Make them let go. Give them some pain for choosing the wrong person to pick on. And because you watched Ninja Street Defense with Sensei George. And show them what you learned. Okay? Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know if you guys want to see any other situations to learn a defense from. Leave them in the comments below. And thank you for watching. Domenico Gozamashita.